we have here a desire to continue to add to, improve and expand upon the way in which we communicate what we do and how to do it. And one of those ways is, can we uh, make more videos? And uh, Senkenberg folks reached out and said, we have an expert who helps us do that. That's Carly Rosberg. She was, put her hand up and said, sure, I'd be happy to show you how I do that. And we're looking forward to how do you do that? So if you also do this or have ideas for it, uh, this is the session where we're gonna squeeze all that in. Um, and Carly, you're gonna go first. And so, it's like the beginning of the unconference thing where we've chosen the first topic. Matt, do you want to add anything to that? No, I mean, I just think that, so from the day-to-day -day programming of Taxon Works, um, there's some just cool things that just make me happy, right? Like there's, there's short little videos where I'll click through and or I'll, or I'll short little experiences where I'll click through and, and I'll get some result or I'll see some nice workflow. And I want to record and express that 30 minute process or sorry 30 second process just as a short like aha this is a cool feature this made me feel good i'd love to know how to most efficiently do that so we could put it up on youtube shorts that kind of idea or just be more effective at communicating the things that bring us happiness as we're interacting on the computer so that's where i was coming from i'm, I'm being selfish here to ask for help how do i do that so before I actually get started and introduce myself, I actually want to ask you all a question. Well, actually two questions. Um, the first is what type of videos are, are you wanting to create? So I heard a little bit from Matt, I think, um, but I'd love to hear uh, other people and what they're looking for uh, forward to in terms of learning what type of videos to create and where you would like to share them at, sort of what platform, Instagram, YouTube, a website, that sort of thing. And please comment in the chat box. Okay, so I'm seeing a couple of answers roll in around training users and posting things on YouTube, videos for presentations, and cool small things that, um, that I can do. MP4 is our PowerPoint. Okay, microscopy videos and educational YouTube. Okay, keep those answers coming in, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And um, I think we'll have a lot to talk about today. So I'll try to get through my slides uh, rather quickly. So on to introductions. Uh, my name is Carly, and I am the social media officer for a project called the Senkenberg Ocean Species Alliance, or otherwise known as SOSA. And SOSA's big goal is to accelerate the discovery, protection, and awareness of marine invertebrate species before they go extinct. And my role mainly focuses on the awareness part of that mission. Right now, I do um, lots of crafting of stories about marine invertebrates that aim to spark people's curiosity about these creatures and also inform them of the threats that marine invertebrates face. And I think one of the best tools to engage audiences is through uh, short format videos. Um, and I'm by no means an expert on, on this, but, but I actually think that that makes maybe the content I'm about to share a little bit more accessible. So hopefully this feels like something that you guys can step into. And what I want to talk to you about today is really going through the basics of creating short format videos. We don't have time to go into full training of exactly how I use different programs. So I'm just gonna highlight some of the key things to think about and give some recommendations on how you might go about starting to create some videos in, on your own. So let's get started. Um, here are some of the videos that I have created and all of them are two minutes or less and they're made for social media. Um, so whether that's reels or TikToks or um, shorts or for story uploads, things like that. They range from being more instructional, like the first one that you see. Um, that's, oh, th that is really loud. Okay, sorry, I did not know that had sound to it. Um, We're not hearing, it's fine, keep going. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so uh, some of them are instructional, like the first one that you see that was scrolling through website. Some of them are informational, like the second one that is part of our deep sea mining series. Um, and then you have really beautiful ones that are just there to 
to be beautiful and also ones that um, promote a specific event or something that's going on. So short format videos can have a lot of different purposes. Um, but I think the way to go about making them is generally the same. The first thing to think about is really creating, oh, uh, crafting the story. And I think it's hard to have a great video if you don't have the foundation of a great story. So this part to me is the most important part of of actually creating a video. So I always start with the why, and this is really gets this really gets down to why does this video need to exist? What do you want to come from it? What do you want the difference or what difference do you expect after a viewer watches your video? Um, and I think it's always helpful to really state clearly the why of your video in, in what you're doing either upfront or at the end of your video, maybe even both. The next thing is really knowing who and where your audience is. Um, so this requires you having a target audience to begin with, and then also being able to assess your audience's knowledge and experience with the topic that you are making your video about. So for instance, the deep sea mining um, Instagram reels that I did, I was talking to a rather uninformed general audience. And so before I could talk about deep sea mining, I had to first talk about what even is the deep sea so that I could invite people in from all different levels of expertise and knowledge about the topic to come along and um, get the basics of what I was trying to tell them for the videos. Last in crafting the story is really building an engaging story journey. So this is really outlining what are the key points you want your viewers to take away and crafting that story that includes those key points. Um, ideally, only three or less key points is, is ideal. Um, the more content you include, the less people tend to take away. So it's important to break up complex content into smaller pieces. Maybe, maybe that means making multiple videos. I think when you're, when you're thinking about how do you make a story journey engaging, I think the most important thing is to make it relatable. So ask questions. Have you ever been in this situation? Have you ever thought about this? Um, maybe add some personal experience. Sometimes I get hung up on the difference between X and Y. Here's an easy way to tell the difference or uh, or asking other sorts of questions or giving some insights into things that you are also working through. Humans are wired to connect with other humans. Um, and so they're more likely to retain information when they connect personally with it. So find out ways to add a human element that could be adding a talking face to your video, or at least in the beginning or the end, or find ways to make it more human instead of just sort of a screen record or something like that. Lastly, consider ending your story journey with a call to action. What should the viewer do next? And really think through how do you move from a learning place in the video to an action place afterwards. So after you've crafted the content, the next thing is to think about assembling all of the different visual assets that you need for creating your videos. There's lots of different things that you can do here. I'm just gonna talk through a few that I think might be helpful or might be things that you are thinking about including in videos. The first is screen recording. So this kind of was what was talked about. Um, this is obviously great for instructional videos. Your devices, every device should have a screen recording function. And I'm not gonna go through what that looks like on each device, but I certainly can provide some ideas to people who are specifically interested in that. What I think is really important here is to have an idea about what the final video format is that you're looking to create. And that's probably going to be influenced by how people, how you expect people to access that video. If it's gonna be on social media, then you're probably gonna to wanna to create a vertical video format. If you expect people to access a video on a desktop, on YouTube, from a website, something like that, then you're probably going to want to go horizontal. And that might depend on, that might influence what format you are recording your screen on. So if you're recording a desktop screen, of course, that's going to be in horizontal. And if you are recording it on a mobile device, it's likely to be vertical. So those are just things to think about when you're thinking about screen recording. Another thing that I just wanna mention here and something that I've used in the past 
is you can actually do a Zoom and record yourself, create a meeting with yourself and record yourself. And in that way, you can have a talking head of yourself. You can also be showing something on your computer screen and have that all recorded along with the audio. That's a really easy, quick, quick and dirty sort of way to create a instructional video that gets all the things that you need. Uh, the next, okay. The next thing to think about is animations. This can be a little bit uh, scary to think about animating something, but uh, in reality, if you just are doing simple animations, they're not so hard and they can really add to something that you are creating to get your point across. The video that's uh, playing right now, every all the animations were created in PowerPoint. And I think that that's a really good tool to be able to use to create simple animations to really uh, make your points more powerful in a video. All you have to do is uh, record your slide timings and then export your PowerPoint as a movie file. Next is video footage. Pretty much any smartphone device can um, record or can uh, record high quality video. And so um, the main thing here to think about is whether you're recording it in vertical or horizontal format. Still images, of course, uh, you can create these on your own, but um, using the Creative Commons is also a really good place to find more content. And um, as long as you set it properly, then uh, that should be good. And then lastly is audio. I really, this is something that a lot of people overlook, but I really think this is important to um, creating a high quality video and sort of moving from something looking professional or more amateurish. You can just get a really cheap uh, set of microphones. I got these off Amazon. They were only 60 euros and it makes such a dramatic difference in the quality of audio and then also the quality of your video. So when sort of putting all the pieces together, the editing or the final cut, um, this is probably the most intimidating part of video creation, um, but it's also the time you get to be creative and really tell that story. I use Adobe Premiere Pro because it's uh, a program that I'm familiar with. I'm familiar with the Adobe Creative Suite, but it's also um, a third party that's a paid program and it can be quite expensive if you don't already have the Creative Suite. There's free options, um, like if you're a Mac user to just use iMovie, there's CapCut, um, but also if you're going to be posting on social media, I would really encourage you to look at the, the functionality of the platform that's already there. TikTok and Instagram both have a lot of functionality in their real templates where you can add voiceover, you can do a green screen, you can add captions, you can uh, pin together different um, still footage or uh, movie footage. It's actually quite robust. I have a few tips to pay attention to that will make editing easier no matter what platform you're using. The first is pay attention to orientation, vertical versus horizontal. I can't stress this enough. Um, to time your graphics to your voiceover, I have a specific strategy that I use and I'm happy to talk more about that, but really being able to make your graphics and your voiceover uh, sync up, it makes a really powerful video. And then lastly, keeping it short and simple, really trying to do two minutes or less, especially if you're on social media. Um, and if you're if you're posting on YouTube, of course, it can be a little bit longer. But think about how much content people can actually um, absorb and learn from and think about maybe doing shorter uh, videos with um, a playlist of the same topic. That's always a good option. So I wanna wrap up with what I think makes a good video. And then I would love to hear uh, your guys' ideas on what makes a good video. Um, the first is a good story, uh, really making sure that you have the foundation of a good story. The next is a clear purpose and maybe more specifically a call to action that moves your uh, video from just learning into action. And then lastly, engaging visuals. I think we often think of this as the key element that makes a video a great video, um, but I think it's actually the least important of all three and that if you start with a good story, you have a clear purpose and a call to action that you can actually create something really excellent, um, even if your visuals are not um, as nice as, as what you would like them to be. Thanks, Carly. That was really nice. And it's good to get, feels like we had a 101 foundation talk there. That's really great. So I was just saying there's a question for you in the Q&A. You can see it says um, under the category of like managing expectations, 
how long does it take to create a two minute video start to finish after you've figured out and gathered everything that you you outlined there yeah so i actually think the figuring out and gathering all the things that i've outlined is what takes the the most time um this really depends for me on whether i'm creating uh, my own animation or whether we're i'm just using video footage that i'm filming and pinning it together so it really depends on the video um, I would say that once I have all of the assets acquired and I'm just sort of cutting everything together and I've made my storyline, um, I could get a two minute video done in probably eight hours. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's work. It is work and it can be really tedious. I do, do you think there are things that you can think about ahead of time if you have a clear plan for your video, if you have a clear script, if you're timing your uh, animations or your screen recording to um, your voiceover, that makes the editing process so much easier and quicker, um, but it, it is a time consuming process. Um, there are comments in the chat you can take a peek at. Are there questions, Matt? Did you, I didn't, in the chat? Not necessarily con uh, questions. There's a number of observations. Mm. I can't see the chat because I had to leave and come back. Got it. Oh, bummer. So uh, yeah, you lost the chat. Um, oh, I see what you mean. So yeah. there's a, there was Carly, um, you mentioned Adobe Premiere Pro and um, there was a mention that that was challenging um that was and that camtasia might be easier um can you can you say a little bit about like did your experience evolve from simpler tools or did you just go like right at the trial <laughs> by fire and 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 go into the pro stuff how did you build up your experience with editing yeah, that's a good question um, because I, I still don't believe that I am an expert. Honestly, I started with the tools that are available on Instagram and TikTok. I think that those are really great first tools. You can, like I said, stitch together different videos or still photos. You can add a floating head of you talking about uh, content on top um, of that. And you really get a feel for building that story and crafting content to, to have a story arc. And so that's where I started. And then because I already work in my design work at in Adobe Creative uh, Suite, I already had access to Pro. So for me, that was an easy step. Um, but I think for someone who isn't familiar or, does, or doesn't use the Creative Suite programs, it can be definitely um, overwhelming. I've also used um, iMovie uh, mm -hmm. before, and that's also very simple and easy to work. It's hard to get a vertical <laughs> video from iMovie. I think it, uh, the horizontal format is quite limiting, um, but that's also something that is maybe a little bit easier to step into first. Yeah. Can I ask you a question that chimes in? So. Can you, do you have a workflow that goes from the Instagram editor and then like polishing it in, or are you stuck in that editor? Like, can you polish it in, in, in Premiere Pro um, so, or export it? Or like once you're in the Instagram or the TikTok apps, do you have to only work within that framework? I tend to do everything that I need to do outside of the app beforehand and then bring it into the app. I see which the other is where way around. I will also, which is what then yeah. I, where I will post it. I yeah. think that works better. You can technically download something from Instagram after you already created it. Uh, I think you can also do this in TikTok, but, um, but none of the music comes with it because of the copyrights. I want to ask you and anybody else who has any experience, has anybody used OBS, the the uh, sort of streaming platform that you also lets you compose, record your, your desktop and sort of do overlays and that kind of, has anybody used OBS for any of these uh, movie making functionality? Tommy says yes. Jose has done OBS videos. I need a link, Matt. So the idea is I think similar to what you have for Zoom, except OBS lets you compose your whole screen right it's no it's not just one window but you can put overlays from multiple different digital feeds um dimitri mentions da vinci what could you say a bit about that dima thanks gail for the obs uh link 
it's how I've OBS is how I film all of my talks now that if I have to do a digital talk. Yeah, it, I think uh, I think a lot of uh, streamers, Twitch streamers or YouTube streamers use OBS, but it's actually an excellent tool for for recording at some level. And I'd be curious too yeah. if there's any other tools for cutting or composing that people have used. iMovie. Black Magic. Hmm? FFmpeg for, for cutting. Thanks, Renan. Yeah, I have to say, for me, it was sort of analogous to tools for using, like Photoshop, where Photoshop is very powerful, but there's so many bells and whistles. It's so fully featured that if you're trying to learn it as a novice, you can just drown in all the buttons, right? And I felt that way between Camtasia where it took me a while to get comfortable, but I felt fairly comfortable. But Adobe Premiere Pro, and I just, it was like too many buttons. <laughs> that was just me. You know, other people, their mileage may vary. So. Um, KDE and live. Thanks, Samuel, KDE. for sharing that. Mm. Shortcut is very good too, uh, or shortcut. shortcut. Pamela, if you could share that link to that, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Or FFmpeg or Nan, a link to that maybe. Uh, Carly, have you ever done like longer workshops for scientists or, you know, other people in your institute, et cetera, on, on teaching people how to do this? No, I haven't. This is actually the first time that I am talking about doing this. Um, I'm relatively new to the field of communications and science. I mm -hmm. mostly did um, uh, actually edu education reform work and working communications in that space. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I'm pretty new to this, but it's a really fun space to be in. I also come from the education background, so oh. you're not alone here. Um, okay. I would say thank you very much. I appreciate your emphasis on the story part, right? This sort of gathering your assets includes the, what is it I'm really trying to do? Um, what I have a question about helping us all understand things like very basics resolution. When you were talking about capturing that information and understanding whether it's going to be fuzzy or not. So how, what were some tips you could give people to make sure that it's um, going to look good? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that when you think about resolu resolution, you should once again, think about the final format of your video, where you're going to have it posted on. If you're doing a post on social media, then the resolution doesn't have to be quite so high. And you can get the dimensions of like a typical um, uh, Instagram story post is different than an Instagram regular post or a square post or these types of things. So you can get the dimensions correctly and then, um, and then yeah, export things at different resolutions. In general, if you're, uh, uh, there's, uh, so I mostly use Adobe Premiere Pro and there's different formats that you can choose that um, are presets for different uh, social media functions that that export things at high enough quality that, but not so high that it will uh, load very slowly on your program. So, hmm. so that's something to think about is like sometimes the highest quality is not the best if it takes forever to load. So really know what you're going to be using it for and export it at the, at the quality needed. Um, when you're thinking about sort of bringing in different visual assets, once again, it's, it's, are you keep, are you having it as a small image on a much larger video screen or is it taking up the whole screen and thinking about like what is the resolution that you actually need? I think anything that's going to be digital, you have to really balance having something that's high enough quality with also something that's going to load quickly on lots of different types of internet speeds. Mm. Thank you. Super helpful. I suspect we're going to be pinging you again to do something yeah. where we could all just focus on that. Like have a each go into our breakout rooms and make our own bits and then come back and we could compare. That would so, be very fun. Garly, I'm also a little jealous because I think you're working with uh, your new effort is working with uh, Z Frank. Yes. Is that true? Yeah. So we're ju we just finished filming with him on a video about Pythons. So, so jealous. That has made my life a very happy place in the last couple of months. Maybe I, I think there, there, so for those of you who don't know, yeah, exactly, Lily. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Z is uh, an amazing science communicator. It's a little bit, 
that's a little bit uh, well the byline says it all these are not for uh for uh, for children or, or who, adults who are not children in many of his videos so you have to be a little careful it's probably not safe for work or this forum but um yeah super jealous and um I'm, I'm it's exciting that you would get to work with him in this context it's really great yeah he's a great person to learn from <laughs>